Ah, there we go. Capcom. An umbrella. Alright, well, hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2 is an action-adventure game for the PlayStation 2 of the survival horror genre, and as you already saw, it was released by Capcom. Now, we're actually playing the GameCube version, which was released in 2003. Now, Resident Evil 2 is probably the f my favorite of the series. Uh, a big part of that is it was the first one I played, but I played it on the Nintendo 64 of all things. But I also think it's the Resident Evil that has the most to do and play in it. Uh, if you saw the playthrough of Resident Evil 1, we had Chris and Jill's playthroughs. Similarly, we have Leon's playthrough and Claire's playthrough. But unlike uh, Resident Evil 1, where each character had their own individual scenario, the, both our characters have two different scenarios. And we're going to start with Leon for this video. Alright, now, we can load our game, we can play the original game, we can play a ranged mode of the game. Arranged is sort of, um, sort of like easy mode, I guess, would be the way to describe it. And down here we have our options. Now we're actually going to load a game. Resident Evil 2. We're going to try to load the game. Hang on. Evil 2. There we go. You can see we got a couple of saved files here. But we're going to check out those other saved files later. Right now, we're going to play Leon A, scenario first. And I'm going to sneak in a sip of my soda. Outskirts of an American suburb called Raccoon City. It was later revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T-Virus. A mutagenic toxin created by the international enterprise Umbrella Incorporated for use in bioweapon experiments. The Raccoon City Police Department's Special Stars Unit immediately began investigation. The case was apparently closed thanks to the efforts of Stars members Chris Redview and Jill Valentine. But the Umbrella Corporation's experiments were far from. We got here. All right, there's our hero. That's Leon. First day on the job. Well before he would be running around Europe killing, killing people. Guys, a maniac. Why did he bite me? Poor Leon has no idea how in over he head, his head he is. What's up with that guy? That was a clean head. Wait! Don't shoot! 
Back down. <gasps> we can't stay out here. Head to the police station. It'll be a lot safer. Right, and there's our heroine. Uh, Claire Redfield. Stay on the job. Great, huh? Name's Leon Kennedy. Nice to meet you. Mine's Claire. Claire Redfield. I came to find my brother, Chris. Hey, could you open the glove box? Sure. There's a gun inside. Better take it with you. All right, and there's Leon's zombie doppelganger in the back of the, the, the car. You okay? Still in one piece. <laughs> yeah, that poor trucker got zombified. Parted by an unescapable destiny. This is just the beginning of their worst nightmare. Alright, so normally at this point I would explain the controls and go through our item and our inventory, but I have to rush. I have to rush because I want to be able to uh, make it to the police station quick enough that we can see something that we get unlocked as a bonus. Freeze! Who are you? What are you doing here? Hold your fire! I'm a human! Whoa. Sorry about that. I thought you were one of them. What's going on in this town? Hold on. I don't have a clue. By the time I noticed something was wrong, the entire city was infested with zombies. Alright, well, normally we would take the time to explore this room. We would grab items and extra stuff, but we can't do that. Like right there, there's some ammo we could grab. Uh-oh. Well, the poor owner of this establishment just got jumped and eaten by about four zombies. Now, if we took the time, we could fight through these zombies and pick up the shotgun he had. But unfortunately, that's not an option. In fact, if we walked out the back door as soon as we got here, we would hear the glass shatter and hear him scream. Now, unfortunately, we can't access our inventory, or I think pick up anything, until I make it to the police station. Now, I'm gonna see if I can get through these guys. No, 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 no. There we go. Now, I may have mentioned that I played this originally on the Nintendo 64. That the Nintendo 64 was even able to play this game was a huge accomplishment in and of itself. But now playing it on the GameCube version, I can make out like all this graffiti 
and all of these little extra details that I could not before. Alright, like there, the most dangerous taste. Some sort of tiger drink. And ocean watches. Made, Swiss made. And Ray... I don't know, Ray Belty? Beltoy or something? All this graffiti doesn't mean much to you or me. But, you know, this, this had to be put in there. The developers took the time to put it in here. So it's kind of fun to be able to take a look at it. Like right there, Alex in Hotel. Who is Alex and where is this hotel? What is the deeper lore of Resident Evil 2? Alright, can I jump down? Yep. Ah, now this, this might be a problem. Heat up. Alright, so we're just going to run past all these guys. Now, this is another dangerous part, because we're now in a very now spot. And there are two zombies here that want us dead. Well, actually, they don't want us dead, they want us dinner. I am a little banged up. No, 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 no. But we made it. Alright, well, now we're reasonably safe. You may notice that Leon here is now hold walking around holding his side. And since we're out in front of the police station, I can actually look at our inventory. But just in case, we're going to go down here. You see that? That is a special zombie. It might be hard for you to make him out. Especially if you haven't played some of the other Resident Evil games. But that is Brad Vickers. Brad Vickers is the helicopter pilot for the Stars team. Now... I'm a little banged up, so we're not going to try to fight him. There we go. I'm in red caution. That is bad. That is very, very bad. But since we were able to make it here without grabbing an item, Brad is down there waiting for us. And if we can kill him, we get a secret item off of him. But we're in no condition to fight him. So we'll come back out in a little bit. Okay, here we go. Raccoon City Police Department. A location probably as iconic as the Spencer Estate. But we will take the handgun bullets. And we will take this ink ribbon. Yes, let's use the computer. Door lock service. The whole side doors are locked. They can be unlocked by a keycard. Oh, what's this? Must be the new guy, Leon. Sorry, but it looks like your party has been canceled. What happened? About two months ago, there was this incident involving zombies in a mansion located in the outskirts of this city. Chris and the other Stars members discovered that Umbrella was behind everything. They risked their lives to reveal the truth. But 
No one believed them. Not long after that, all this started to happen. Uh, uh. Hang in there. Don't worry about me. Just rescue the survivors in the other rooms. Here, take this key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But just go. Fine, but I'm coming back for you. Just hold on. So yeah, he's pretty serious. Serious enough to pull a gun on, Leon. Now remember how I was telling you that this is clear enough that I could make out the graffiti and stuff? I could make out the names on those lockers behind him. And one of them said Jojo. I don't know who Jojo is. But sure enough, there was a locker that said that name. Now, we do have a blue key card, so we're going to use it. And we've got two of the doors unlocked. This is one of our safe rooms. And there's our magical inventory box. And there are all our specially unlocked weapons. Now, I'm not looking to get a particularly high score or anything playing through at this time. So I may play around with some of these guns at certain points. But right now, we're just going to let them be. All right, the police memorandum. 8-23-1998. This letter is just to inform everyone about the recent movement of equipment that happened during the precinct's rearrangement. The safe with four-digit lock has been moved to the star's office on the second floor. Moved from the star's office on the second floor to the eastern office. On the second floor, the password is 2236. Raccoon Police Liaison Department. So remember that number, 2236. And I'm pretty sure that's the same number each time through. Alright, now I am going to save now. There was no save point in that safe room. It's an old typewriter. Yes, we're going to use our ink ribbon. So heaven help us, we're not going to die and have to do all that over again. Now there is some talk if I'm worried about my ranking. The answer is no, I'm not really worried about my ranking. But I don't want to use the special weapons just yet. We might play around with them a little more a little later. Especially when we take on bigger enemies. So we've saved the game, and we've got ourselves an extra 30 bullets. Let's see what happens with poor Mr. Vickers here. Now he is much tougher than your average zombie. Sixteen shots before he dropped. And he didn't even die. 
He just fell down. Alright, now you can see that puddle of blood underneath him. That means he's done for. And this is what we want to get off him. The special key. Alright, let's keep our... Our HNK VP70. Manufactured by HNK Germany. Uses 9mm parabellum rounds. Let's keep this full of ammo. At all times. There's actually a code you can put in to have unlimited ammo for all your normal weapons. I don't remember it offhand, though. There must be an unopened locker somewhere. We're going to hang on to this key, because we're actually going to use it pretty soon. The desk is locked. So do you remember in the first Resident Evil, when I played Chris, I had to collect little keys? Well, Leon is the same thing. He has to find little keys. But he does get a special lighter item. If we were playing Claire, she would get a lockpick, and she would just be able to open that with no problem. Oh, did you just see what I saw? Something went by that window. Ooh, now that is a good shot. Especially since you know that we just saw something go by the window. An open-close switch for the shutter. It can't be activated since the cord is cut. Well, that's a shame. His head is missing. It seems to have been twisted off. But there are some handgun bullets. Ooh. Puddle of blood. And you can just make out that drops of blood are falling from the ceiling. It's locked. A spade is etched under the keyhole. So yes, just like in the first Resident Evil, we're going to have to find special keys to open some of these doors. Gee, I hope that's not Chris's blood. No, it's that. That... That is bad. Yeah, you got that right. Now, thankfully, since we're only in red caution, I should be able to run past this thing without dying. Alright, we made it. That critter is called a Licker. Now, I'm pretty sure at some point during the game, they're going to, we're going to get a note that says that's what that thing is. And a Licker is a zombie that has been further mutated by exposure to the T-Virus. They, they kind of take the place of the hunters from the first game. Empty soda cans and junk. Nothing else. Now, you may have noticed that that creature had this wicked long tongue. That wicked long tongue is like a lance. So it can shoot it out at you and stab you with it. And its hands, also, well not just its hands, but its feet, end in claws. And like hunters in the first game, they can lop your head right off. Alright, operations report. September 26th. The Raccoon Police Department was unexpectedly attacked by zombies. Many had been injured. Even more were killed. During the attack, our communication equipment was destroyed, and we no longer have contact with the outside. 
We have decided to carry out an operation with the intent of rescuing any possible survivors, as well as to prevent this disaster from spreading beyond Raccoon City. The details of the operation are as follows. Security of the armaments and ammunition. Chief Irons has voiced concern regarding the issue of terrorism due to a series of recent unresolved incidents. On the very day before the zombies attack, he made, all, made the decision to relocate all weapons to these scattered intervals throughout the building as a temporary measure to prevent their possible seizure. Unfortunately, this decision has made it extremely difficult for us to locate all the ammunition catches. So yeah, brilliant idea. Hide all the ammunition across the police station. It has become our top priority to recover these scattered munitions. To unlock the weapon storage. As stated earlier, it will be extremely difficult to secure all the ammunition. However, a considerable supply still remains in the underground weapon storage. Unfortunately, the person in charge of the keycard used to access the weapon storage is missing, and we have been unable to locate the key. One of the breakers went down during the battle, and the electronic locks are not functioning in certain areas. It has become a top priority to restore power in the power room and secure these locks. Recorder, David Ford. Operations Report, September 27th, 1 p.m. The western barricade has been broken through and another exchange ensued. We sheltered the injured in the confiscation room on the first floor temporarily. Twelve more people were injured in the battle. David Ford. Additional report. Three additional people were killed following the sudden appearance of an as-of-yet-unknown creature. This creature is identified by missing patches of skin and razor-like claws. However, its most distinguishing characteristic is its lance-like tongue, capable of, a capable of piercing a human torso in an instant. Their number, as well as their location, remains unknown. We have tentatively named the creature the Licker, and are currently in the process of developing countermeasures to deal with this new threat. So yeah, there's our first mention of the Licker monster. They are tough little buggers, and I do not want to deal with one if I don't have to. It's a fireplace. An oil painting hangs above it. The title is... A Sacrifice to the Hellfire. Well, we happen to have a lighter. And for lighting the fireplace... We get the picture to burn, and we find something. The red jewel. Yeah, we're going to take that. Surrounded by zombies, this is not good. But we should have more than enough firepower to deal with them. Now, like in most Resident Evil games, the idea is actually not to fight all the enemies that we come across, but rather to try to avoid them. What we want to do is bravely and boldly run away. But I'm going to need to come through this area several times. Everyone's favorite Resident Evil game? I think so. So, no, we're not safe yet. There's currently a discussion happening on what is everyone's favorite Resident Evil. And there's a good argument to be made for Resident Evil 4. But Resident Evil 4 is when the series really changed. And I would actually go further than to say changed. I would say uh, completely abandoned its identity altogether. 
but that's maybe something we'll discuss if we play Resident Evil 4. All right, we've made it to another safe room. And here's Operations Report 2. September 28th, early morning, 2.30 a.m. Zombies overran the operation room and another battle broke out. We lost four more people, including David. We're down to four people, including myself. We failed to secure the weapon cache and hope for our survival continues to diminish. We won't last much longer. We agreed upon a plan to escape through the sewer. There's a path leading from the precinct underground to the sewage disposal plant. We should be able to access the sewers through there. Only drawback is there, there is no guarantee the sewer, disposal, the sewer disposal plant is free from any possible dangers. We know our chances in the sewers are slim, but anything is better than simply waiting here to die. In order to buy more time, we lock the only door leading to the underground, which is located in the eastern office. We left the key behind in the western office since it's unlikely that any of those creatures have the intelligence to find it and unlock the door. I pray that this operation report will be helpful to whoever may find it. The recorder, Elliot Edward. Okay, so we are in another safe room and we have our magic box here. Um, I should at least drop one uh, green herb off. If anything, I should use this other green herb. There we go. Some more handgun bullets. Now, over here is a locker. Come on, Chris. Not Chris. Come on, Leon. Yes, we will use the special key. And there are two outfits that should fit you. Will you change your clothes? Alright, so this is where we get to change Leon's costume. Now, I think the costume on the left, that kind of biker jacket with a skull on it, we're going to start with that one. Alright, so Leon is all decked out in his leather jacket. And he holds his gun all gangsta style now. I think actually wearing this costume, he has a better chance of getting critical hits. Or maybe he fires faster, I don't quite remember. But we also have a dark room, and here we can develop film. So if we remember, any film that we find can be developed here. 